Hello and welcome to Nurses Handbook. Today we will discuss some multiple choice questions from anatomy and physiology. Question number one: The outermost layer of the heart is option A periosteum, option B endocardium, option C myocardium, and option D pericardium. The correct answer is pericardium. Our heart consists of three layers: the outermost pericardium, the middle myocardium, and the innermost endocardium. Pericardium is further divided into two: the outer fibrous pericardium and the inner serous pericardium or epicardium. And there is the serous fluid, otherwise known as pericardial fluid, in between these two layers of pericardium. Question number two: Bartholin's glands are present in option one only in males, option two both males and females, option three only in females, and option four none of the above. The correct answer is. Only in females, Bartholin's glands, otherwise known as vestibular glands, are found only in females, which is located slightly posterior on the left and right of the vaginal wall. It has an average size of 0.5 cm. The main function is to secrete mucus to lubricate the vaginal wall and vulva. Question number three: Where does alimentary tract terminates at? Option one: anus. Option two: rectum. Option three: colon. And option four, intestine. And the correct answer is anus. Alimentary canal or alimentary tract consists of the following structures. It starts with mouth and then passes through esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, rectum, and then terminates at the anus. Question number four, which is the largest salivary gland? Option one, pancreas. Option two, sublingual. Option three, submandibular. And option four, parotid. And the correct answer is parotid. We have three major salivary glands. They are parotid, submandibular, and sublingual salivary glands. The word parotid is derived from two Greek words, which means beside the ear. Parotid glands are located inferiorly and anteriorly to the ear, between the skin and the masseter muscle. Question number five: Which of the following plays a vital role in vibrating the tympanic membrane? Option one cochlea, option two auditory canal, option three ear pinna, and option four eustachian tube. And the correct answer is eustachian tube. Eustachian tube, which is also known as pharyngotympanic tube, connects the middle ear cavity with the nasopharynx. It aerates the middle ear system, maintaining pressure and clears the mucus from the middle ear into the nasopharynx. When the pressure are balanced, the ear drum vibrates freely. Question number six: Which of the following is the body cavity that contains the pituitary gland? Option one: abdominal. Option two: thoracic. Option three: pleural. And option four: cranial. And the correct answer is cranial. A body cavity is a fluid-filled space inside the body that holds and protects internal organs. There are two large human body cavities: the dorsal cavity, which is at the posterior or back of the body, extending from the head. To the length of the trunk, and the ventral cavity is the anterior or the front of the trunk. Dorsal cavity is subdivided into cranial and spinal cavity, and our pituitary gland is located in the cranial cavity. Question number seven: Which of the following is the point at which an impulse is transmitted from one neuron to another neuron? Option one: dendrite. Option two: glial cells. Option three: nerve center, and option four: synapses. And the correct answer is synapses. Synapses are microscopic gaps that separates the terminal button of one neuron from receptor of the another neuron. Question number eight: Which of the following anatomical region of abdomen lies just distal to the sternum? Option one: epigastric. Option two: hypochondria. Option three: hypogastric. Option four: umbilical. And the correct answer is epigastric. As shown in the picture, the abdominopelvic cavity is anatomically divided into nine parts. In the first row, the right hypochondriac region, the middle epigastric region, and the left hypochondriac region. The second row, right lumbar, middle umbilical, and the left lumbar region. The third row contains the right iliac, middle hypogastric, and the left iliac region. Question number nine: Which of the following term? Describes the motion of bending the forearm towards the body. Option one, abduction. Option two, aversion. Option three, flexion. And option four, supination. 
and the correct answer is flexion. There are different kinds of body movements such as abduction, adduction, flexion, extension, inversion, aversion, pronation, supination, rotation, etc. The closing of the hinge joints are example for flexion. The different body movements can be seen in the picture as shown here. Question number 10. A patient has a fracture in which the radius is bent but not displaced and the skin is intact. This type of fracture is known as Option A. Closed green stick Option B. Complex comminuted Option C. Compound transverse and Option D. Simple pathology And the correct answer is Closed green stick fracture A green stick fracture is the fracture of a soft bone in which the bone is bent and it breaks but not displaced. As the name indicates, the fracture will be same as of a fresh wood or a green stick breaks from the outside when it is bent. Green stick fractures are common in infants and children as their bones are soft. Thank you for watching. For more updates like this, do like, comment and subscribe the channel Nurses Handbook.